Say, so, well, you can claim it. Who's this one? Who's this? It works. It doesn't work every time, but it works. <laughs> Face red. <laughs> it was. Now you're just a light or was it just pink? No, now you're just pink. It was red. Oh. Oh. So, so what do you notice about some of these answers? Mm -hmm. They're really different. They're very different, right? Um, how about like how about like the level at which you could complete a graph like this? What do you think that is? Like, what grade could a student be in, or what? So algebra, right? They could be they could be in algebra, um, but you know the same student working on this could do um, you know could do something like this, right? I mean that doesn't work, but if it they worked on it, <laughs> with some more work, this could be really cool. Okay, um, so again, can, can feel free to continue playing because um, I'm just trying to convince you that this is fun and. Educational, probably the best way to do that is for you to just play around with it and see for yourself. Um, but I do have a few more things I want to say about how I implement this in my class. So <clears throat> the way this works is uh, posted on my uh, on my wall at school and also on the door. Uh, once every week or every two weeks, every couple weeks, um, I'll post a new challenge, uh, and then I'll post like the last week's winners with some scores. So you'll notice some scores here. Um, I give some extra points for certain things, so they get, like, I'll give them a point for every star. These are always, like, arbitrary made-up points by me. Um, but it gets the kids competing more. So, uh, so I give points for every star they get. I give them points for using less functions, so if they use, like, two functions, maybe I'll give them an extra point. If they use one function, I'll give them two extra points. I give points for creativity, because kids will come up with some really cool answers, like, uh, one of the ones I did was like a rough rendition of my face was in the background of the marble side, and then somebody, one of the kids' answers was drawing a hat on it, and it worked, and that was like, really creative and fun. Um, uh, and then, and then also consistency. Like you saw, some of them didn't work sometimes, but did work other times. So uh, there's a little randomness in it, and if, if they get theirs to work every time, I'll kind of give them an extra point for that as well, because it's a little bit harder to do that. Sometimes you just get lucky on. Them. Um, so this this has been probably the, I mean this has definitely been the biggest change that I made this year and has made a huge difference because um, one problem I've always had is that um, I have small classes but just like everybody else I have a pretty wide variety of like range of abilities in those classes and work speed not just abilities but um, so I mean I could give kids a worksheet and I, I do give kids worksheets I'm sorry guys everyone's <laughs> one. I give a worksheet and you know one kid might finish it in 10 minutes and then one, one kid might need like 45 minutes with help and then finish it at home. Uh, so that can be, that can really be a problem because sometimes that kid that finishes in 10 minutes, it's all right and it's good and what else do they have to do? So, uh, so these marble side challenges, I have them uh, posted on my wall for any time. If any kid's done everything else they have to do, I'll send them to the marble side challenge. Um, and they really get into it. And the really cool part about it is those kids that get through really fast, this is an added challenge where they can just kind of learn math on their own. Um, and they've learned a lot more about graphing by playing this than I taught them, like way more, just by trying these challenges and figuring stuff out. So um, there's, some, there's some loose criteria I have when I'm making the challenges, because I give the challenges to uh, Algebra 1 all the way through calculus. Um, and so I just kind of ch like challenge the, the kids in calculus to make more sophisticated creative graphs. Like if they do all straight lines, that's, that's not very interesting, so I'll kind of push them a little bit further. Um, and with the Algebra 1 kids, what I do every once in a while is I'll just like throw a function they've never seen on the board and like, oh, like, this is a cool one. 
like try it out. And then they'll use that and remember that. And I didn't have to even tell them how it worked or what it looked like or how to transform it. Um, so the challenge is I try to make sure they can be completed with linear equations. Some of them are really hard to complete with linear equations, but, but hopefully at least, or you, you can at least get most of the stars with linear equations. Um, and then I want, uh, I usually try to make it so that you can complete it in an easier way by making a more sophisticated equation. So that one we were working on, you can do that in one equation if you use um, like a polynomial and play around with it. Um, that'll work. You can do it in one. Um, I just want to highlight some of the student work that I've seen this year. So here was one with uh, so so guess what, like how like how how many how much this kid had learned officially in math when he did this? Like like what has he learned to graph at this point? Do you think in order to do this? Lines. Lines. Okay. <laughs> like linear equations? Yes. Okay. Anything else? I mean, this is pretty sophisticated. No, I bet he's algebra one. Like when, what's that? I bet he's algebra one. Or she. Yeah, this is, a, this is the algebra one. So, uh, and they hadn't learned quadratics at that point, right? So this is a trick function, which he's never learned about. Um, inverted. Inverted, yeah, inverse. Uh, and, and also, like translate it pretty properly. I usually give them like a little tip. I'm like, hey, it would look a little bit better if you did this. So they, because because they can do it in any form they want, and sometimes it gets a little messy. So I'll I'll, I'll give them like little tips every once in a while on that. Uh, like restrictions, you can't see the rest of this, but he just like popped a bunch of holes out of it using circles and ellipses. So <laughs> that was pretty crazy. Uh, so here's here's another challenge. This is a challenge, and here's how it was completed. Um, and this was also, this was a student in my, this was an 8th grader um, in Algebra 1 who last year had like finished the year with a D minus in his class. And he did this and I didn't really help him at all. Um, and it was awesome. So uh, near the end of the year, a couple kids created their own Marvel side challenge. I think you, is it Tony, you have like a whole, is this, or is that you? I don't remember right now. Uh, there's there's a few people that have like Marvel Side Club cha Marvel Side Challenge clubs at their school now that go really uh, really deep into it and the kids can make their own Marvel Side challenges if you send them to teacher Desmos. So this was one that my student made for me, which was really cool. This was one of my uh, tenth graders. Um, I challenged them to, to do one that to like make one that I couldn't do, which you can. If, if anyone wants to, I'll, I'll set this challenge up. Make a Marvel Side challenge that I can't do. It's impossible. Uh, okay, so if you want the, uh, if you want some more information about this, uh, go to bit.ly uh, bit slash Marvel Slides TMC. Uh, I have a list of, I think, like 12 challenges. I'm going to make more next year, so I'll just kind of keep adding to that list. Um, and you can see a little bit about how, how I do this in my class. Uh, if you have any more questions, I just want a little review of what's going on. So, okay, that's my favorite. Hopefully you enjoy it. I'm tempted to 